Hello and welcome to Your Health in Your Hands. I'm Dr. David Ajibade with the Brain and Body Foundation. Now, depending on when you're watching this, a week or a few weeks ago, we had Dr. Abayomi Salau on to talk about strokes, the importance of movement, the importance of active rehabilitation, not lying down in bed for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, because you've had a brain injury or you've had a stroke. The importance of getting you, getting, getting you up and, and moving as quickly as possible because your brain loves movement. Your heart loves movement as well. Your body loves movement. You are made to move. We've emphasized that over and over and over again. So we want to talk more today. We have, we have him back on and we're going to get right into it. But we want to talk more today about what is actually going on in the body and how this movement, all these things that we're talking about on the outside, how, what exactly is happening to our immune systems, to our cardiovascular system, to our mood, to our ability to think, all those things that make us human beings so that we can take the necessary steps. Obviously, we don't have all the access to all the nice expertise and the equipment that the Western world enjoys. But in some cases, that could be an advantage because we are, it forces us to make, take use of what we have or make use of what we have. It forces us to go out into nature and interact more with nature. And the more uh, we know that the more we exert ourselves, the more we work together with nature, the better our, body is, our bodies respond and the better, the better our bodies recover. So without much further ado, I'm going to welcome our, our guest, Dr. Abayomi Salawu to the show. Welcome back, sir. Hello, and thanks for having me once again. Absolutely. So there was a lot to be talked about. And before we even came on the show, we always started recording. There was a lot. And I was telling you, I wish I had recorded all these things you were saying. Because there's so much good stuff um, that we need to learn. One of the things that, that we want to point out is how we can engage our bodies more, especially for those who are recovering from injury or they have some kind of neurological problem that affects their movements. But the key thing that you said, and maybe you can pick up from here, is that the body is remarkably self-regulatory and we just need to learn how to work with it. So okay. tell us more. Okay. I think for any condition, thank you, what we have to kind of think about, and this is one of the things I try to explain to people, think of conditions happening in three stages, before, during, and after. What do I mean by before? So if I use the example of what we talked about in the last episode when we were talking about stroke, before somebody had a stroke, something, so you're living your life, everything perfect or, or maybe not so perfect. That's the stage I call prehabilitation. What do I mean by that? That's the time you can prevent things. Elder lifestyle, being physically active. These are things that can prevent conditions for us. So the body, if you're physically active, you're eating good nutrition and you're maintaining all the, and you don't indulge in things, excess of anything is bad. We all know that. Uh, it's not just only for the, uh, just um, a cut phrase. It is excess of everything. We can also go into too much physical activity, but I could talk about that uh, another, uh, later. So when we're physically active, our body and our mind is optimized, okay? Mm -hmm. Everything functions. And because not just it functions, it functions at an optimal primed situation. So it improves our immunity, as we talked about. It improves our digestive system. It improves our brain function. People don't, it improves cognition. Uh, but, and apart from that, it also helps to prevent diseases. There was a study done looking at people who run regularly. And this is, they compile this data, over 60,000 different people run, logging how many miles they run um, per week and stuff like that. Anyway, to cut a long story short, they looked at those cohorts and did a longitudinal study in them and found out those people compared to the general population, have one of the lowest incidence of brain cancer. Mm. Nobody was expecting that. Also many other conditions in there. Lower incidence of diabetes, lower incidence of 
heart attack. So these, and we know now also before communicable diseases was the leading cause of death and diseases in the world. That has been flipped over now. Long-term conditions now are mainly due to preventable things. Obesity. And we might think, oh, that's not a problem of developing countries. No, it is a problem in developing countries. I can give statistics from different parts of the different parts of Africa where they have obesity problem. Mm -hmm. So it is, and it's gradually, and this also, we're talking about the kind of food and what we eat is also mm -hmm. changing. So the more processed food you eat, the more quick food, the fast food culture. Yeah. So yeah. if you think that our body is still the same body as our ancestors, our cave ancestors, and this is quite important, the same body. Now, our cave ancestor will go chasing his food. He's a hunter-gatherer. He has to run, catch his food, eat the food. That energy will give him enough energy to chase the next food. We, in one meal, have more calorie in our meal than our cave ancestor will eat in a whole day. <laughs> we finish yeah. that meal, sit in front of a computer or whatever, chat with some people, and then in five or six hours time, we're ready for the next meal. We haven't burnt that one fully off. Yeah. Then before we know it, a few hours later, we're having another one to eat in the evening. And we've not burnt all that one off in there. Yeah. Now, the body, the easiest thing the body likes to use is glucose. Burns it off to create energy. Once it's got excess, it has to pack it up into other things. It starts turning it into other tissues and other, other food components. So it then becomes fat, it becomes, turns it into other things. Store it, it has to store it in the body somewhere. What activity helps us to do is burn those unnecessary storage we don't need mm. off. We use what it is meant for. We're optimized in there. All the mm. systems. The ones that burn, the one that creates, all working mm. together. So that's the mm. preventive component. And it's somebody who's optimized that if inevitably, for one unfortunate reason or the other, the condition happened, either an injury, a, um, disease, or whatever, that person is in a better position to deal with the effect of the disease than somebody who is not whose body is not prepared for that. You mean somebody who is sedentary and who isn't yeah. active and all that? Uh, somebody who's active. So somebody who's active is more likely to get over, recover faster. Right. And after, when we talk about the rehabilitation phase, they are more likely to be motivated, to be able to get on top of things, move on and recover faster, get back to whatever level of functioning they need to. Yes. Yeah. So, Everything is stacked against what we call the couch potato, the person who doesn't move around, the person who doesn't who's quite sedentary. Right. Amen. So, and when I say that movement allows the body to feel, because again, another thing is if somebody lies in bed, one of the first things you get, your digestion slows down, constipation increases. Yeah. And that changes simply from moving around, walking around helps. A lot of those in terms of that. And another function is also what we call our biological clock, which is the day night rhythm that our body goes into. Now, that's very important because that's also controlled by the brain. Mm -hmm. And that day night differentiation has an important component in how we deal and manage stress mm -hmm. because. What the stress hormone our body produces, cortisol, the highest output is in the morning, around 9 a.m., to help you deal with the stress of the day. Yeah. Then as the day goes on, in the evening, the body secretes a different kind of hormone, which is called melatonin, to help us sleep. Now, if you live in big cities or developed countries with bright lights, bright lights affects the brain's production of melatonin. Yeah. So you're more likely to have disordered circadian or body clock rhythm. Mm -hmm. Whereas for us in developing countries, 
we have less of a problem in that, apart from those if you live in many of the big major cities. But if you live in the countryside, which is where most people live actually in developing countries in that, mm -hmm. you don't have that. So that's an advantage from a recovery perspective for us in terms of that. So we can use nature to our advantage. In that. So there's nature and nurture component to recovery, but we've got nature on our side in developing countries. Mm -hmm. It's how we then maximize the use of what we've got to help us better. And there's a reason why increasingly, a lot of all these conditions seems to be showing more in people in developing countries from the data you get from the previous episode when you were talking about a lot of this occurring more. Yeah. If we, and I say, and I try, I'm trying not to use this word genetically programmed to move, but we need to move a lot more when you are somebody with melanin. It's just a natural consequence of a lot of different things. So you need to move a lot more. Being you, need to move, you need to move a lot more in the sun. <laughs> yes, in the sun. And you've got everything that can help us in doing that. You've got the fantastic weather. Mm -hmm. We are just coming out of winter. We've been hibernating for the past. <laughs> I go to work in darkness and I come back, it's still dark. It, it, yeah. in Whereas you don't have that in many developing countries. You don't have that in Africa. You almost have equal... Yes, there are some variations there. But you got good number of sunlight hours, day hours of cold you know. And that is what we need to try and factor in in terms of optimizing and using that from improving and increasing the physical activity level. The other bit in terms of the exercise or getting physically active that we don't often talk about is impact on our mood. And also, when you're physically active or you, let's say you go for a walk, you're gonna meet people. We as human beings, we're social animals. This is one of the things, people that differentiate us from other animals. Mm -hmm. It's only yeah. human beings that get up and go, I'm going to the next village to see somebody. Most other animals move based on physiology. Is that they're hungry or they're running away from a predator? Yeah, we go as part of what makes us healthy. That social network is important mm. to our health, to our recovery. Having that support from people, our dear, uh, uh, the, the, our loved ones, help mm. us, and being situated within those environments help also in terms of the recovery process. All these are things we can tap into. Hi, I'm Wafrisi Goodness with the Brain and Body Foundation Clinic. Are you a parent of a child with sickle cell disease or any neurological disorder? I would love to invite you to our free clinics on Mondays and Fridays in Abuja, where we give free consultation and free supplements. And if you're outside Abuja, we can still get help to you wherever you are. For more information, please send a message to the number below and don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms at Brain and Body Foundation for updates. So you, you get feedback, real-time feedback, is yeah, that what you're you saying? Get, yeah, there are some of those apps uh, that have been created that you can get real-time right. feedback on that. So a lot of all these things are already available that you can access in any part of the world where you've got access to the internet, okay? And then there are some, one of which we've used, I've used in one of my previous studies, where you just plug into your TV, all the exercises you need to do are on that device, and the TV, the device also comes with a camera, and you can see as you're doing it, and the interaction, it will give you and direct the movement along those lines. So those ones are there. One of the things we've created is to use what we call virtual reality. Virtual just means not real, but we create it as a reality. And the advantage of the virtual reality system is you can create an environment that looks so real. Mm. So I can transport somebody in their village to any part of the world in that environment that makes them feel they're in that environment, in a different environment. And because of that 
believable component, I can also use it to create different things, different therapy programs. So for instance, people, let me say somebody who's afraid of spider, for instance, there have been programs developed in virtual reality to try and treat phobia from exposure to tiny, it looks like a spider to tarantulas, but they're not real. But it gets the person to the point of being able to tolerate and being able to interact to get over their phobia. It's been used in pain management as a form of distraction for people. And one of mm -hmm. the things we've done is put a package of rehabilitation into something similar to that. Okay. Which a patient then can put, put over their head. And when you wear it, um, I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. Uh, if I take my glasses off, and basically it's a headset like this, and you put it on. And once it comes on, because it's completely enclosing the eyes, you can't see, you feel you're in that environment. And in mm. that environment, I can give different exercises for speech, for control, <clears throat> cognitive function, mm -hmm. for people to interact and do. Yeah. And a lot of all these things are simple, easy. This is not, they're not expensive. In fact, there are headsets. One of my headsets works off a mobile phone. So you can have the same app on the mobile phone, which you put, there's something called the Google um, Cardboard Box, which is a virtual reality headset made of cardboard that you can slot your phone in to access some of all these programs. So you can do things at home and have access to specialist things, even though they might not be next door to you where you are. This is the beauty of modern technology now about things Absolutely. we can do and with things we cannot do. So rehabilitation for me, and this is what we call tele-rehabilitation, rehabilitation at a distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do it that, that, that's huge because so so people in who who may not who may just they, they may be motivated enough to want to do the exercise and all that but they don't know exactly what to do and they may not have a physical therapist or occupational therapist nearby to help them walk through that you're saying that with this this and those look like video game things that the teenagers use and play all the time right so yes you're, you're saying that with those can actually help to replace yeah what? you can in fact you 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 fit it right on the head when you said um, these things that are like video games. Now, yeah. this one was made by, well, you've got a trade name and it's in there. But basically, all for this one, you take away the front. That's what it looks like inside. That's uh, my mobile phone. And it goes into that. Okay. And the head comes back on. I click it back together. And then what you get is same thing. So not expensive. The same mobile phone that people carry about on a daily basis. So it is, yes, you're right. It's like playing game, but for people who play computer games, even mobile phones on the phone, what's the first thing about mobile uh, about computer games? Do you That's enjoy it or not? Yes, you enjoy it, yes. Good. So once yeah. people enjoy something, they're more likely, it becomes more interesting. And there's something we call gamification which is what you were talking about in terms of the computer games. But the gamification, human beings, we are naturally competitive, naturally. We either compete with people or we compete against ourselves. All I need to do is set a score. You can score this score, you can score this in the, the next thing I want to be that score. Yeah. Even on my yeah. own. Oh, and that's what we leverage on to make it. And some of these apps now come embedded with AI. So if you're getting it, it increases the complexity. If it's becoming too difficult, it simplifies it. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to demoralize the patient. You yeah. want them to engage. It's the same way if you've ever played computer games, you get to a level, if it's too difficult, people will not will stop playing that game. So the game right. developer knows so some of those games, because one of the things I also add is some computer programming 
One of the things they do is if you attempt it five or six times, then the game automatically just simplifies itself. And then the person okay. can move to the next stage. <laughs> Otherwise, they will give up. And they, will give up. and they won't want buy again. <laughs> yeah, they no, won't. they won't. And that's the key thing about human learning because rehabilitation is all about learning. Yeah. Success makes us want to do something again. Yeah. yeah. If it's not successful, we give up. So whatever, when you design how you design real program, you have to design it. That's what we talk. We set goals, but you set goals, what we call smart goals. They have to be specific. They have to be measurable, realistic, and cool. But most importantly, they have to be achievable. Mm -hmm. You do not set goals that somebody is not able to achieve. So yeah. if we set achievable goals, we are more likely to achieve them. And that's the same thing with going back to our original theme about movement. You're not going to wake up from a couch and say, I'm going to run a marathon. No, you start little, small incremental steps. So walking around your neighborhood, yes, that's more than enough to increase your physical activity. Cycling, if you've got access to where you can cycle, if it's safe to, this is how we say, especially if you've got places walking, exercise is the freest drug we can prescribe for everybody the most powerful Nobody, one too. you don't pay for it yeah. and the benefits are huge absolutely well doc we are out of time again but that is huge that is absolutely fantastic i'm sure our viewers are going to really appreciate this can you give us how i'm assuming this isn't available in nigeria or is, i mean how would someone in, in lauren for instance or uh, a doctor who wants to take to learn more about this, how will they find out? Well, they, we, we've, we've got a website where we've got one of these products. Uh, it's called the Brain Recovery Zone. It's um, okay. www.brainrecoveryzone.com. And they can see there. But we're not the only ones. There are so many other, but the, the, the one I'm involved in that I um, co produced is the Brain Recovery Zone one. And apart from the headset, there's also actually most of the activities are also available on the computer. So you can actually see straight on the website if the person is registered with the, um, and then you can access all those different rehab activities that the person can do in there. There are cognitive um, exercises. There is um, speech and language exercises for people to be able to do, to improve their speech for people who've got dysarthria, who've got speech impairment following the stroke or head injury, or for people who've had cognitive function. So attention, memory, different tasks that people can engage in that you can do straight off the computer. If you don't have a headset, and if you don't have any of these, um, or you don't have a smartphone that's able to do most of all these things um, in there. So there are so many different platforms on which all these things can be um, assessed. That is fantastic. And that's it's very important to, for physical physiotherapists to know about this. And of course, doctors and occupational therapists and all that. So they can, they can take advantage of it or send their patients to it, especially those who are just overworked. I, I know, I, I mean, as you know, we, we work with the Brain and Body Foundation uh, with kids with cerebral palsy and, and other de 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 debilitating conditions. And the physical therapists are just overworked everywhere. They just they just can't handle it. And so it's always helpful. And, and the physical therapist told me too, that it's always helpful when you have something that they can help them, help their patients better, some further assistance that, they, that the patients can do on their own uh, more effectively. So when they come for their one week or once a week or twice a week, three times a week treatment, they are a lot further along than well, what, and then if they never came or ne they never had anything else to work with. So that is huge. So folks, please, be sure to take advantage, be sure to visit that website. And another thing I just want to point out what Dr. Salahu said, he said, uh, maybe you didn't catch this, but he said that there are people, that people who are already healthy, who are already active, who are already physically engaged in society and, and, and relationships and their bodies and moving around, they're the ones who will bounce back more regularly. So you, you want to be preemptive about this. You want to, just for the sake, even hopefully, God forbid, there's a, someone has a stroke or a brain injury, 
again, is those that are, are, who are already healthy and active that will bounce back more quickly. So you want to make sure you're taking your medications, blood pressure medications, blood sugar medications. We black people tend to have this thing worse than, than other people do. So please make sure you take these things. And I also talk about vitamin D as a, as a, for, for black people because we're generally deficient in it. So you want to make sure that you're taking, whatever your doctor is telling you to do, make sure you're taking them. And, and, and of course, make sure that you're moving. Don't sit down for too long or you got to get up. It doesn't matter what kind of job you're doing, you've got to be moving. So doc, any final words you want to leave our guests with, our audience with? Well, what I always say to a lot of people is the same thing. You just actually said it in there. If I could prescribe only one medication, only one, that would be exercise. That is a take-home message I always tell to a lot of people. Just keep moving. Regularly, as often as possible, that your body, totally, your health, is all the more beneficial from it. Wiser words have not yet dropped from the, from the lips of mortal man. <laughs> <laughs> Very important. Thank you, folks, again for joining us, and thank you, Dr. Salau, for for this your great wisdom and, and sharing your expertise. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, and folks, be sure to join us next week. God bless. Take care. See you soon.